song books and turn to page 333. about that, see Titus and Hannah, and I'm sure they can, uh, well, if you see Titus, I'm sure he'll direct you to Hannah, and then Hannah can answer your questions, all right? All right. Is there any other announcements that need to be made here this morning that I'm not aware of? Any other announcements? No choir practice. No choir practice today? Okay. All right. All right, well, let's get ready to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer here this morning, and uh, let's see. Brother Tim, Brother Tim, would you lead us in prayer this morning, please, sir? I want to call out oh, Daryl Margaret. Daryl Margaret really having a hard time right Darryl now. Daryl Margaret. Okay. Pray for Daryl and Mark. Brother Tim.
give this offering in your name, Lord. Bless this church and everyone here, Lord. If there's anyone here that's lost, Lord, may they come up today and, we, and be blessed, Lord, and be saved, Lord. Be with us today and be with our loved ones that are not able to make it, Lord. Yes. We pray in your name. We'll do your Christ's hands Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Ma'am. Sir, she does say it like you do, like you would do a frog. Don't say that get into his holy word and see what he's saying to you. Don't just listen to what people say. You know, I take notes when when you preach a road and preach a brain preaches. I love to hear y'all preach. It it gives God's word inside me and it's living. And 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 Jake and I we we study and we pray every Amen. day and it brings us closer and it brings me closer to my Savior. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 41 and verse number 10. Uh, I like this verse here. Uh, I was uh, uh, early Thursday morning, I guess about 4 or 5 o'clock early Thursday morning. I was just laying awake there in the bed and was just thinking about everything that's uh, going on around us and uh, all the things that everybody worries about. And this passage of scripture came to my mind and, and uh, these were some of the thoughts the Lord gave me. So I hope it's a help and a blessing to you here this morning. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. If you find your place, let me hear you say amen. 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 The Bible says, Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Amen. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. I want you to listen to that verse. I'm going to read it one more time. I want you to listen to it again. Listen to all the promises that the Lord's given us here just in this one verse. All the promises that he's given us. And if we really take time to really think about it, think about what the Lord's saying here in his word, uh, there's nothing that we ought to fear. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, fear thou not. Notice that's a direct command there. It says, fear thou not. Amen? God's commanded us in his word for us not to fear. Amen? Amen. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. I want to bring a message here this morning simply entitled, Fear Thou Not. Fear Thou Not. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we thank you for this day. Yes. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. God, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, meeting the needs in our lives. Most of all, God, we thank you, Lord, for the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, Lord, eternal security. Thank you, Lord, for sealing us unto the day of redemption. God, I thank you for your word and how you speak to us through your word. God, I pray, Lord, that you just help me now for the next little bit as I stand to preach. God, I ask you to give me power and wisdom. God, give me the words to say. God, I pray, Lord, that this message will be a help to our church. God, I pray, Lord, that the saints will be lifted up. God, that our eyes will be fixed on you. And, Lord, that when we leave out of here, that we'll not fear anything uh, that this world has to throw at us, not fear anything that Satan may try to throw at us. But, Lord, we got our eyes fixed on you and will not fear in this world today. Lord, help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody can be seated. We read that again. It says, Fear thou not. For I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will hold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I, as I was thinking about this the other morning, as I was laying there awake in bed and was staring at the ceiling and was thinking about uh, everything that we've got going on around us, we've had a change in, in president, uh, we, we've, uh, we've seen our country uh, just in a mess, uh, and things going in all kinds of different directions. We're seeing, uh, 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 I guess, uh, executive orders coming and undoing things that are sending our country in a further, uh, fatherly in the further in the wrong direction morally. Uh, we're seeing uh, that it's going to be we're, what, we're, what we're previewing now uh, is that we're seeing that our country uh, with abortion, we're, we're mm -hmm. taking a hard left on that again, going right. further and further away from where right. we need to be. Yeah. There's so many different things. Uh, and we look at all the, the fear mongering that's taking place. And there's so much that's taking place in our world that can cause us to fear. And as I scroll right. through Facebook, 
And I'm sure every one of you here this morning have done the same thing. As you scroll through Facebook, you see a lot of folks there mentioning all the fears that they have. They, they, they're worried about this and they're worried about that. They're, they're worried about the government. They're worried about mandates that may come. They're worried about how, how this is going to affect the church. And, and not only do you see that in just everyday folks, but we see that from pastors as well on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, posting things where they're talking about how they're worried about this and they're worried about that and worried about... Uh, the, the restrictions that may be coming being placed upon the church. But as I turn to God's word, I see here in God's word, by the way, you see the phrases, fear thou not, or be not afraid, throughout the entire Bible. Amen. And I know this, I know this beyond the shadow of a doubt, God's word is true. Amen. God's word still helps us today. God's word still relevant today. And if God told us not to fear, then what are we supposed to do? We're not to fear. Right. Amen. The Bible even tells us that we've not been given the spirit of fear. Amen. Right. We're not to fear. Right. Here we read in Scripture, it says, Fear thou not. And we see some reasons as to why we should not fear. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. True. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. As I read this verse, what I see in God's word in this one verse right here is there's not a there's no guesswork here. There's not a, a bunch of, well, I might do this and I may do that. No, as you read that verse, you see a bunch of definite things that God mentions that he will do. Right. He will be there for you. He is your God. He will uphold the, hold you. He will strengthen right. you. God will do these things for you. Amen. And if God promised us to do those things for us, then why should we fear? Right. There was five things that came to my mind. I'll try to go through these quick here this morning. But there were five things that came to my mind that I believe that we all should think about on a regular basis Preach. that ought to help us to not be afraid. See, we can, st we can take time here this morning and look at all the circumstances that we've got going on in our world. We can look at all the circumstances that we've got going on in our personal life. We all face things. Well, everybody in here this morning, you've got a battle that you're facing. Maybe some of you here this morning, you're in several battles. Maybe your family's facing something they've never faced before. Going through some trying times. Absolutely, our country's going through something that we've never faced before. Amen. And we look at all these things, and if you stay focused in on the circumstances that surround you, you can walk around in fear. And you can live in fear. Right. And there's so many Christians today that are living in fear. There's so many churches today that are living in fear. There's so many people that are staying at home because of fear. There's so many people that are not trusting God because of fear. But there's five things that come to my mind that I believe that can help us live above fear. And live for God and be totally sold out to Him. The first thing that came to my mind is number one. I'm saved by His grace. Amen. I mean, I want you to think about that here this morning. We've been, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you've been saved by His grace. Amen. amen. And when we stop and we think about that, amen, it ought to help us. It ought to strengthen us. It ought to encourage us to continue to press on when we realize that we've been saved by His grace. Amen. amen. How many of y'all here this morning, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you've been right. saved amen. by His grace. Amen. amen. You know the Bible tells us that His grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. God's grace is sufficient for you. You realize what that word sufficient means? It means it's more than enough. Amen. God's grace is more than enough. If God's right. grace was more than enough to save you and to redeem you and to keep you from going to a devil's hell, then God's grace is enough to help us in the circumstances we find right. ourselves in. Amen. I find strength in that. Amen. I can go through this life and not fear. Amen. I want you to know here this morning, I don't fear death. Amen. I don't fear man. Right. I don't fear the government. Right. Amen. I'm not even afraid of the virus that's going around. You know why? Because God's grace oh. is sufficient for me. Right. God's grace is sufficient for you. Amen. If God can reach down into the horrible pit and the miry clay of sin right. and lift me up and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings and put a new song in my mouth. Amen. If God can do that for me, then what should I have to fear? Right. You think about saved by His grace. Saved by His grace. You know what, what God's grace did for us? God's grace pardoned us. Yeah. Right. Right. If we got what we deserved, every one of us would die lost in our sins right. and bust hell wide open and right. burn forever yeah. and forever Amen. and forever. And then think about what God's grace did for us. God's grace saved us, washed our sins away. God's grace pardoned us. Amen. We were guilty. 
Amen. And we deserve to go to hell. Yeah. That's what we were guilty of. We were guilty of doing wrong against God and living contrary to His Word. We are absolutely 100% guilty. But by His grace, He pardoned us. He set us free. Amen. He wrote our name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's given us eternal life. And if He can do that for us, then surely... He can take care of us right. whatever we face Amen. on a daily basis. Amen. 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 Hey man, there's nothing that the government can do. Hey man, to make us fear. Why? Because I'm anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Hey man, I've been saved by His grace. Yeah. Hey man, there's nothing that I fear that can come my way. Hey man, and in my life. You know why? Because Jesus Christ redeemed me. He bought me with a price. Hey man, I've been bought by His blood. I've been saved by His grace. What do I have to fear? As the preacher was preaching Wednesday night and was talking about a city, looking for a city. Hey man, don't threaten me with heaven. Hey man, I know where I'm going. When I die, amen. I've been saved, been redeemed, been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I got nothing to fear. Amen. And I got nothing to fear. I worry about those that claim the title Christian and live in fear. Because something's not right. Something's not right. Either they don't truly know the Lord is their Savior, or they've grown so cold on God and drifted so far off from Him, they're all wrapped up in their circumstances and they're walking around in fear. I mean, I have nothing to fear. I say this here this morning because I know that over everything that I'm preaching so far, I know that you know this. If you've been coming to church any length of time, been saved any length of time, have read any of God's Word, you understand what I'm talking about here this morning. But it's good to be reminded of it because there's things that we all know, but you can get so focused here on the things that bring fear that you forget how good God is to you. Amen. Amen. Every one of us here this morning, God's blessed us. God's been good to us. Amen. We've been saved. By His grace. So anytime that you begin to have some fear and you begin to worry about what tomorrow may hold, when you begin to worry uh, about your family, begin to worry about the government, and begin to worry about things that may happen or may not happen, do you realize that most of the things we worry about right. never happen? Right. Everybody with me here this morning? Amen. Most of the things I'd say, venture to say, 99% of the things that we worry about never happen. Right. Amen. Why waste our time and our energy? Amen. Why waste our faith? Everybody with me here this morning? Why Amen. waste our faith? Amen. Worrying about things that may never happen. Amen. Right. I know what's already happened. Amen. Jesus saved me and set me Amen. free. Amen. He saved me by His grace. And if God can do that for me, then why not trust Him with everything else we have in our lives? Amen. Fear thou not. One, because we're saved by His grace. Number two, fear thou not because we've been sanctified by His blood. Amen. We've been sanctified by His blood. Do we understand here this morning what that word sanctified means? Amen. I mean, that word sanctified means to be set apart. Amen. Right. You know why the Christian ought not live in fear? Amen. I because we're not like the world. Amen. Amen. I mean, God has sanctified us by His blood. Amen. We've been set apart. Amen. This world is not my home. Amen. I'm just a pilgrim passing Amen. through. Amen. Amen. I've got a home waiting for me beyond the blue. Amen. I'm trusted in the Lord. Amen. I've been sanctified right. by His blood. Amen. Why should the church be wrapped up in the fears? That everybody else out in the world's wrapped up in. Right. There's supposed to be something different about us. Right. Amen. Right. Everybody's watching you. When you tell people that you're a Christian, Amen. when you tell them you go to church, when you tell them that you know the Lord is your Savior, they begin to watch you. Amen. Amen. And there ought to be something different about you. Amen. Why? Because we've been sanctified by His blood. We've been set apart. Amen. Amen. There should be something different about us. But when we scroll through Facebook and when we're out in public, and you listen to the conversations and read the conversations on social media. And you can't tell the difference between a Christian and somebody that's lost. Something's, something's, not, something's not right. right. Everybody Amen. with me here this morning? Amen. 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 When people go on Facebook and they read through. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dumb here this morning. I, I realize that not everybody that's on my Facebook is saved. Amen. I accept free requests from all kinds of people. You know why? Because I want to have the opportunity to present the gospel to them. Amen. It's have a chance to get saved. Amen. As I scroll through there, I know not everybody on there is saved. Amen. But I know there's a lot of people that's on there that claim to be Christians. But as I scroll through, I can't see a difference in their conversations on there than those that are lost and out in the world. We are sanctified by His blood. Therefore, we ought to live 
sanctified Amen. by His blood. Amen. There should be something different about us. Amen. There should be something different about our talk. There ought to be something different about our walk. There ought to be something different about the way we behave ourselves. Amen. The way we conduct ourselves. Amen. I have no fear here this morning. Why? Because I've been sanctified by His blood. I've been engrafted into the family of God. If I'm in the family of God, what do I have to fear? Amen. Amen. Sanctified by His blood. I mean, we will not have any fear here this morning because we've been saved by His grace. Yes. Because we've been sanctified by His blood. Number three here this morning. Fear thou not because we've been sealed by His Spirit. That's right. I thank God that I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. Hey Amen. I'm glad that the day that I put my faith and my trust in the gospel for salvation, I'm glad that very moment that the Holy Ghost of God took up residence on the inside of me. I want you to look at Ephesians. I didn't have this written down here, but I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse 13. Ephesians 1, 13. The Bible says, In whom uh, he also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed... With the Holy Spirit of promise. Hey Amen. The moment that I got saved. Hey Amen. The Holy Ghost of God took up residence on the inside of me. The moment I realized I was a sinner on my way to a devil's hell. The moment I realized that I deserved to go to hell and burn for all eternity. And knew that I couldn't make it on my own. The moment I realized that all my throat wasn't good enough. Hey Amen. When I realized that my sin was going to lead me farther and farther away from God. And I realized I needed a Savior. And Jesus was that Savior. And He died for me and shed His blood. And I put my trust in the gospel. Amen. He saved me. And he sealed me with his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sealed me with his Holy Spirit. The Bible says over there in Ephesians 4.30 that we're sealed unto the day of redemption. You understand what that's saying here this morning, being sealed unto the day of redemption? Yeah, right. Amen. That means that when Jesus Christ took up residence inside of my heart, amen, the moment that He saved me and washed my sins away, He sealed me with His Holy Spirit. I am saved. Amen. I know that I'm saved. Amen. I'm sealed unto the day of redemption. In other words, amen, I want God has given me. I cannot lose. Right. That doesn't give me a license to sin and go out in this world and live right. any old which way I want to. Right. Right. Amen. Because I'm saved. The Bible tells us Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Tells us, for by grace are you saved through faith. We're sa it's not by works. Right, right, Amen. Right. It's not by works. It's by grace through right. faith. Yeah. But Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 tells us that we've been saved unto good works. Amen. Because we're saved. And because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Because we're sealed unto the day of redemption. We ought to have some good works about us. Amen. People ought to be able to tell that you're different. Amen. And you say, preacher, it's hard. Living in this world, living in everything that's going on, all these fears that's around us, it's hard, preacher, to, to, to live that sanctified life, that separated life. Hey, Amen. It's hard to do that. Hey, Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, yes, this flesh is weak. And this flesh is going to give in. This flesh is going to give in to fears. This flesh is going to give in to sin. This flesh is going to fall short. Hey, Amen. But greater is He that is within me than He that is in the world. Hey, Amen. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost of God dwelling on the inside of me. Hey, Amen. I'm glad I've been sealed under the day of redemption. Amen. It doesn't matter how hard it gets in this world. It doesn't matter how tough it gets. It doesn't matter how much the battle's raging. Amen. I'm glad that I got the Holy Ghost of God living on the inside of me. Amen. I'm glad that I'm sealed under the day of redemption. Amen. I'm glad. Amen. I'm glad I've got the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We think about these things. It ought to help us conquer those fears. When we know that we've got the Lord. When we know that we've been saved. And we don't have to worry about hell. Right. Amen. That ought to give us strength. That ought to help Amen. us conquer our fears. Amen. When we realize we've been sanctified by His blood, that we're different from the world, that we've been set apart. Amen. That we're not going to have to go through all the. Listen to me. We're not going to. Those of us who were saved, we're not going to have to go through all the things that the people in this world are going to go through. Right. Amen. Because of that day of redemption. Amen. I've been saved by His grace. I don't fear because I've been sanctified by His blood. I fear not because I've been sealed with His Spirit. But I like this number four. I have no fear here this morning because I'm steadied by his presence. I'm steadied by his presence. This past weekend, we, we went up to the mountains and uh, I remember we went to a little old place. I, I like going to all the restaurants. Up there. That's my favorite thing to do with Pigeon Forge is go to all the restaurants. And I try every time we go to find at least one restaurant that I haven't been to. And sometimes that gets difficult because I've been going up there all my life. Sometimes more than once a year. 
But I finally found one, found one I hadn't been to and went to that Harpoon Harry's. I'll, I'll give them a plug there for free. It's a good place. But there's always one greasy little burger place we always got to make our trip to. Mel's Diner up there. There's Mel's Diners everywhere. But I, I love that Mel's Diner up there. It's just a little hole in the wall place. When we got up there, was getting ready to go inside. This makes me, just what Lily did made me think about this. When I got her out of the car, got her out of her car seat, she did what every little kid likes to do. When I got her out of her car seat and sat her down, she got up on the curb and she wanted to balance herself along that curb. And when it made a turn, she wanted to stay on that and make that turn and try to balance herself on that curb. Well, as she did that, you gotta keep in mind, she's two years old and 60 something pounds, she's a big girl. It's hard for a two year old to keep 60 something pounds balanced on that thin little curb. So what did she do when she felt like she was gonna lose her balance? She reached over and grabbed hold of daddy's arm and steadied herself on daddy's arm and guess what daddy did? I left my arm out there and let her hold on to it. And I walked with her around that curb. Right, I couldn't go inside the burger. But I stayed right there with her and walked her until we got to the end of that curb until she got on the sidewalk. Made sure that she was able to do that. Now you think about that. You look at everything that we're going, that's going on in this world. Right. You think about everything that you're facing. Amen. And sometimes it gets hard to put one foot in front of the other. And sometimes it's hard to stay focused. Sometimes we want to throw in the towel and quit and give up. Sometimes we let the circumstances overwhelm us and we get off balance and get off kilter. Amen. But I'm glad that God said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. I'm glad my Heavenly Father is right there by my side and he puts out that right arm. Amen. With his right Right I can grab hold of it and he helps me stay balanced and he helps me stay the course and he helps me finish my race. Amen. I'm glad that I'm steady in his presence. I'm glad that it doesn't matter how tough it gets. I'm glad it don't matter how hard it gets. Amen. I don't care how much the pressure is. I don't care how much fear I feel in my life. I'm glad that I've got a God. Amen. That loves me and cares about me. And he said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Amen. We read about his right arm there in our passage of scripture. And I'm glad that with his right arm I can lean on him. And he helps me. And he strengthens me. And he carries me through. Not only does he, not only can I lean on him, but once you pay attention to what I was talking about with Lily, not only did I grab, let her grab hold of my arm, but I walked with her. Right. I walked with her. And when she started to fall, I kind of give her a little bit more strength and nudge her back up on the curve. You think about that, we have the Holy Ghost of God dwelling on the inside of us. What does the Holy Ghost do for us? What is one of the jobs of the Holy Ghost for the believer? He leads us and he guides us and he takes us in the paths that he have us to go. Hey, I'm telling you here this morning, what do you have to fear when we've got a God that loves us and paves a way for us and will lead us and guide us and we'll just cling to him and follow him. He'll take us through and we've got nothing to fear. Amen. Fear thou not because we're saved by his grace. Fear thou not because we're sanctified by his blood. Fear thou not because we're sealed by His Spirit. Fear thou not because we're steadied by His presence. And lastly here this morning, fear thou not because we're sustained by His promises. Amen. Amen. We're sustained by His promises. You know what that means to be sustained? We're comforted. We're upheld. We're secure. We've got what we need. Amen. Because of His promises. I thank God for His promises. I thank God for His promises He gave us there in Isaiah 41.10. That he would strengthen us. That he would help us. That he would uphold us with his right hand of righteousness. I thank God for his promises. You realize here this morning that God is truth. Amen. He is truth. Yes, he is. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He is the truth. Amen. And so everything that God says is true. Amen. Everything that's in His Word is true. If He said He'd never leave us nor forsake us, take it to the bank. It's true. Amen. If He said He would take care of us and meet the needs in our lives, take it to the bank. It's true. Amen. If God said that He's up in glory, preparing a mansion for us, then take it to the bank. It's true. Amen. And if He gave us the promise that He's coming back, to receive us unto himself. Right. You can take that to the bank too. Because it's true. It said we're sealed unto the day of redemption. You know what that day of redemption is? Think about this. My soul's already saved. He didn't save this body. I want you to think about this. this I, I love this. This is an amazing thought. 
The Bible says that we were created in the image of God. Everybody with me here this morning? Amen. Amen. God's a trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Right. right. We were created in His image. Body, soul, and spirit. Amen. This body, this flesh, is weak. Everybody with me? Right. It's sinful. Hey Amen. I was born into sin. Hey Amen. My spirit, everybody with me here this morning, my spirit was dead. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ saved my soul. Amen. He redeemed my soul. Yes. Amen. Do you know what that makes me? I'm only one third of what I'm supposed to be. Everybody with me? Amen. Now, you, everybody with me? I'm only one third of what I'm supposed to be. Stick with me here. When I got saved, Jesus saved my soul. And he filled that dead spirit with his Holy Spirit. Everybody with me? Amen. But this body has not been redeemed yet. But there's coming a day. Right. Everybody with me? There's coming a day. Hey, man, according to Scripture, the Bible tells me that everything that has to happen has already happened, amen, for the Lord to come back. Hey, man, I, you know what? We see everything that's going on in this world. Hey, man, yeah, we can let it get us down and let it, let it get us discouraged, amen. We can look at the shape our country's in. Hey, man, I'm proud to be an American, and I still believe it's the greatest country on the face of the earth. Hey, man, but I'm not happy with the way she's going. Hey, man, I'm not happy with the ones that are sitting in government. I'm not happy with the decisions that they're already making right off the bat. Hey, man, but you know what? This world is not my home. Hey, man, I'm just a pilgrim passing through. Hey, man, and I know that it won't be long according to God's word that he said he's coming back that he's going to split the eastern sky and he's going to step out on the clouds and he's going to call us home to be with him amen. Amen. those of us who are saved amen. amen you know what we're sealed unto the day of redemption you know what the day of redemption is it's the day that we, he snatches us out of here amen. we're amen. raptured out of this old sin sick world amen. amen and we meet him in the clouds you know what's going to happen when we meet him in the clouds amen. everybody listen to me here this morning when we meet the Lord in the clouds by the way amen we'll not prevent those who are asleep in the Lord amen those that died and went on before us the Bible says be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord amen their souls in glory with the Lord amen. I believe they're going to step out on the clouds with him and their bodies will raise up out of the grave. Amen. And we'll meet them in the air. And then we'll be joined with them. There'll be a glad reunion day. Not only that, we'll receive our glorified bodies. Amen. There'll be no more sadness. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more partying over there. Praise God. Amen. Cancer will be gone. Amen. Cancer will be gone. Amen. Coronavirus will be gone. Hey Amen. All the all the worries and the cares will be gone. Hey Amen. Communism will be defeated. Everybody with me here this morning? Hey Amen. We'll be changed from here to there in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Hey Amen. I know that this is true. God's given me His word. Yeah. Why should I fear? Amen. Why should I fear? Amen. There's no reason why a child of God should walk around in this world with their head low. There's no reason, church. There's no reason why this local church right here should walk around with our heads hung low. Right. I understand what's going on outside the doors of this church. Amen, but God's been good to us. Yes, right. Amen, God's blessed us. Yes. God's taking yes. care of us. He's meeting the needs in our lives. Amen, we ought to come here and gather in here every chance that we get and come in here with a smile on our yes. face. Amen, and come in here ready to rejoice and give praise to God because we don't have to fear. Amen. We don't have to live Amen. like this world. We leave out of here today. You turn it on the news. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all you hear is gloom and doom. Yes. Amen. You know what? I, I just like to advise you here. Turn your TV off. Amen. Turn it off. I, I, I listen to news talk radio. You know what I need to do? I need to shut the radio off. Yeah. You know what we need to do? We need to spend more time with God. Amen. Because you notice here, all these things I mentioned all come from God. We're saved by God's grace. We're sanctified by His blood. We're sealed by His Spirit. We're steadied by His presence. We're sustained by His promises. If we were to spend more time with Him. Stay focused in on Him. Right. I don't care if it's Biden, Trump, whoever. They're not going to help me and give me what I need. That's right. Amen. Amen. I don't care who gets elected to office. They're not going to give me what I need. Right. You know what I need to have that closer relationship with the Lord. Right. I draw my strength from Him. I get encouraged from Him. I draw my strength and get my courage from being around God's people. Yeah. Amen. You know what you need to see? You need to see your preachers not living in fear, Amen. but trusting God. Amen. You know what helps us? Seeing you have faith. 
Amen. Right. Walking in trust in God. Right. And not living in fear. Amen. Church, we're a family. Right. We were to glean from one another. Iron sharpened the fire. You come in here with your head held up high, saying, I trust in God. I love him. He's going to take care of me. And it rubs off on people. Right. And it helps right. you. Amen. Fear thou not, because we're saved by his grace, sanctified by his blood, sealed by his spirit, steadied by his presence, and sustained by his promises. Amen. Fear thou not. God will uphold you with his right hand of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Everyone standing to their feet here this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around here this morning. This altar is open here this morning. Whatever you have need of, I want to encourage you. Won't you come? If you're here this morning and you're struggling with fear, worried about what tomorrow may hold, worried about what might come down through executive orders, worried about all the violence and stuff that they keep talking that's going to come down the line. Maybe you're going through a battle in your life, some kind of sickness, financial struggle, marital struggle, whatever it is. Give it to God. God will take care of you. God will help you. That's right. Folks come to the altar here this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Folks come and do the business with the Lord. That's right. The Bible tells us, cast all of our cares upon Him for He cares for you. Let those fears go here this morning. Don't let fear drive you. Don't let fear run your life. Don't let fear ruin your family. Don't let fear creep in. We've got a God that cares about us, loves us, gave us His promises, saved us, set us free, prepared a place in glory for us. we got nothing to fear. Trust in God. Cast all your cares upon Him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I, I can't take it for granted. Thursday night I had an opportunity to preach at Crossroads and thought I knew all the men in there, but I gave the altar call like I always do. And thank God there's three men that came forward and got saved. I don't want to take it for granted everybody's in here saved. I mean, there's been a lot of people over the years that's gone to church and finally they admitted they wouldn't where they needed to be with the Lord. I've heard many testimony like that. I want to ask you here this morning. And I want you to be honest with yourself and honest with the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Everybody here this morning would say, Preacher, if I were to die today, I'm not 100% sure that I'd go to heaven. Would you slip up your hand? just want to pray for you. Is anybody like here this morning would say, Preacher, that's me. If today, God forbid, if today was my last day on this earth, I'm not 100% sure that heaven would be my home. Won't you slip up your hand? just want to pray for you. I wouldn't dare single anybody out. I just want to pray for you. Is you like here this morning say, Preacher, that's me. I'm not 100% sure. Church, no doubt we all know folks that are lost. They don't need to see fear in you. They need to see your faith being strong with each passing day. They need to see you trusting in God. They need to hear you praying. They need to hear in your conversations that you're not worried, that you're trusting in the Lord, leaning upon Him, leaning on His right hand of righteousness. Church, let's not fear. God sure has been good to us. He's given us his promises. Amen. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for all your many blessings. Yes. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the truths that we read in your word. God, I thank Amen. you, Lord, for this simple message, Lord, that you gave me a few days ago. God, I thank you, Lord, for sending it my way. And God, how much it's helped me and strengthened me. And God, I pray that it was a help and a blessing to everyone here this morning. I pray that every single church person, Lord, every church family member, Lord, that's here today, as we leave this place, God, I pray, Lord, we leave differently than we came in. I pray, Lord, that whatever fears we may have, God, I pray, Lord, that we have cast them at your feet and given them to you. Help us, Lord God, not to live in fear. Lord, help us to stay focused in on you. May our faith be strong, knowing that you're going to take care of us and that we're winners already. God, we thank you for all your many blessings. Most of all, God, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Thank you, Lord, for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your grace, God. We love you. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, we humbly pray. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds clear here this morning? Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for being so attentive here today. Thank you for coming and being with us. We encourage everybody to come back and be with us here again tonight at 6 o'clock. And we'll go ahead and pray. We'll be dismissed. Brother Mark, if you will, dismiss us in prayer, please.